Greetings from Fargo, North Dakota. I'm gonna take a little drive today from here to Duluth, Minnesota. As you can tell, it snowed a little bit last night. Although I'd say the temperature this morning is probably in the low 30s actually. It feels like it's warming up compared to the last couple days. So in today's video, we'll talk about some more of the cold weather experiences I've had over the last couple days. Um, some of the odd sounds that you get, uh, supercharging in cold weather. Come along for the ride and enjoy the view. Getting on the road here in Fargo, heading out to Baxter, Minnesota, uh, which is right next to Brainerd. And then from there, I'll head out to Duluth. Tesla is telling me that at 145 miles, I should arrive with a 26% charge. I charged last night, I think it was up to 93% and got in the car this morning at 89%. The temperature was actually down to 23 when I just got in. It feels like it's in the 30s, but uh, it was pretty chilly last night, apparently, and the car burned about 4%, just keeping the battery warm. I, I guess I should have put in, when I was planning on departing, I think that helps the battery somehow. I'm not sure what the, the deal is there, but I've heard something along those lines. Um, but we'll see. So given 89% and given 145 miles, I should uh, get in. You know, I ran some calculations and I'm always going like super conservative. But Tesla's telling me 26%. So that seems like a fair amount to play with. I mean, if you come into anywhere with a quarter tank of gas, like it's not a big deal. Uh, and then I'll charge up there and then get back on the road. Okay, so we have a couple topics that we're gonna discuss here. And again, I'm on my little Osmo handheld camera thing. Um, so it has a mind of its own. You might see it panning left and right. Let's get started. Um, a couple things. Number one, the sounds that this car makes in cold weather. And I don't know if this is also something that you would get in warmer weather. It might be, but I'm definitely noticing it in cold weather. Um, there are bangs, pops, and buzzes. And I'm going to play a little video. Let's see, intersection here. I should be going right there. Um, I am going to play a little clip of a video that I recorded when I was in Montana the other night when it was 9 degrees, and there was some humming going on, um, and that was kind of odd. I'll play that really quick. It almost sounds like this road that the Tesla map brought me on is a little bit of a joke. Um, it almost sounds like... A propeller plane is flying above me. And so in that video, you kind of can hear this loud buzz. And uh, I thought that was a little strange. You know, I had some commentary in the video clip, so I won't repeat too much of that, but um, unexpected, that's for sure. Uh, not bothersome if I know that it's normal, um, but certainly unexpected. The other thing that you get is these bangs and pops and kind of clunks. And uh, it almost sounds like when you're driving, and it has to be the battery. I mean, this is a pretty intense piece of technology. And I'm assuming this battery is flexing in that way or expanding and contracting. But it would be kind of nice to know that that's gonna happen in advance, because I'll be driving down the road, I'm kind of used to it now, but you'll be driving down the road and you'll hear this punch, like, like did someone just punched the bottom of the battery, or you hear like a pop, or a clunk, clunk, clunk. And it's like, okay, uh, it sounds like I just ran over a boulder, <laughs> or was hit on the undercarriage of the car with a rock or something, or I or ran over a big pile of like icy snow. Um, it's becoming normal now, it doesn't bother me. At first I was like, am I gonna pop the tires or is the battery gonna be punctured by some object that I just hit? 
I could not possibly be hitting that many objects for that to be the source of the noise. In fact, I don't think I've hit any objects. So um, I've talked to some other Tesla owners, you know, again, in one of my previous videos where I talked about uh, supercharging is kind of like smoking a cigarette on a street corner with a stranger. Uh, a lot of people will just come out and chat with you uh, and talk to you about their cars. And as far as I'm hearing, these bangs, pops and buzzes and even whirling sounds are all part of the electric experience. Um, if you're converting over from an internal combustion gasoline engine, uh, you're gonna hear these sounds and um, they're normal. Uh, <laughs> until the battery like falls out of the car, which I know it's not gonna happen. Uh, you're just gonna have to get used to it. Uh, next up, I'm kind of seeing right now with the temperature ranging from nine degrees Fahrenheit up to 29, uh, I'm seeing a max range of 200 miles uh, in practice because I always want to arrive with 10 to 20 percent. I'm actually working with 160 to 180 miles. So if you're interested in getting a Tesla Model Y, uh, I think that that's kind of a reasonable range in the dead of winter if you're in the upper Midwest and it is just cold, cold, cold. Uh, you're gonna see a 50% reduction and likely that's a result of reduction in battery capacity It's a, a result of using the heater um, And the battery needing to keep itself warm this morning. I noticed even though it was in the mid-20s I went to bed last night with the battery. I think charged to 93% and I woke up uh, at 89 so it did burn through four percentage points in the battery last night as I slept um, I guess if I had told the Tesla that I was going to be departing at a certain time, it could have burned less energy because it wouldn't be needing to condition the battery for me to get it at any time. Rather, I could tell it to condition only within a particular window. Uh, I just need to remember that. I keep forgetting. And now for the meat and potatoes part of this video, or the tofu and rice, whatever floats your boat. I like them both. Energy consumption by the numbers. Cold weather driving and what it's really gonna cost you, at least in terms of energy consumption. Now, I will apologize up front. The video seems to be really bouncy. I'm on a kind of a two-lane highway here uh, that has a lot of those little oil sealant lines perpendicular to where I'm driving, so it's just kind of like this dunk, 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 dunk. So, uh, bear with me. Uh, you might have to look away if it gets a little too bouncy for you, uh, and then just listen to me. So, as part of this video, uh, it's going to be two prong. Prong number one is going to be screenshots of my average consumption over the last five miles, the last 15 miles, and the last 30 miles. And then part two is going to be for the average electric car driver or Tesla owner who doesn't really care about that stuff so much, but really they kind of just want to know if they know how far they need to drive to their next stop, how much percentage of electricity should be in their battery before they get on the road. So those are going to be the two main focuses. Let's start first with the numbers. Picture number one, the five mile average. Picture number two, the 15 mile average. And Picture number three, the 30 mile average. Scenario number one, the five mile average, has me consuming or burning or using, whatever the term is, 396 watt hours per mile. And the 15 mile average is reduced a little bit down to 377 watt hours per mile which is better, smaller numbers are better. And then the 30 mile average has me down at 370 watt hours per mile, which is the best of the three scenarios. When you see those peaks and troughs, the peak means it's using more energy and the trough means that it's using less. In some parts of the country, which are relatively mountainous or hilly, that's gonna mean that you were driving up a mountain and then the other low part means you were driving down the back side of it. In a flatter part of the country like this, it could mean that I'm gunning the car uh, and using more energy and then I take my foot off the gas pedal and I drive more efficiently. Or it could mean that there's like some crosswind coming and the car is just fighting more to get through. 
you have these same uh, things with a gas power car. You just don't really see the data. Um, so that's that. That's what you're seeing in that. So for all of you who just want to see the numbers, there are your numbers. You can take those three scenarios. The environmental um, numbers that I'm in is that today's temperature is about 28 degrees. And um, I'm having the heater on between 68 and 72 today. I've noticed that 68 and 69 tends to be like a fine line where it could be a little cool. I bump it up to 69 and then suddenly it gets really warm in the car. Other times I'm around 71, it gets kind of cool and I bump it up to 72 and it just gets really warm. Not sure what the difference is there, but uh, the range is 68 to 72 on the heater. And uh, obviously 28 degrees in the Midwest is not particularly cold. It would be a frigid day in California, uh, but in the Midwest, it's really not that cold. Uh, obviously, uh, you guys can get down into like minus 20 and minus 40. When you get that cold, you're just gonna have like half your battery capacity because so much is going to keeping the battery warm and then also keeping the inside of the car uh, warm enough to be comfortable. But right now, it's not a particularly cold day, but definitely we're getting into fall and it feels like early winter here. Uh, so take those numbers for what they're worth. As I continue driving through the Midwest uh, over the next month, I'm gonna go stay with some family. We may have some snow days. We may have some really bitter cold days. I'll do more videos as the temperature gets uh, colder and colder. So now the question is, what percentage battery charge should you have before you get on the road? So in the case of Baxter, where I charged most recently, I rolled in and I knew I was gonna have to drive 118 miles to Duluth. And running these numbers will tell me at a minimum, how much battery should I have in the car? So the math is pretty basic. You take your watt hours per mile and you just multiply that by the number of miles until you get to your destination or what it would take to get there. In the case of Duluth, it's 118 miles. And for the five mile average, you just multiply 118 by 396 watt hours. And then that gives you 46.7 kilowatt hours. Now, again, if I wanted to use the watt hours without moving the decimal point, it would be 46,700. I just choose to move the decimal point um, three places. So 46.7 kilowatt hours. Now, in my case, that would mean if I took that number and then divided it by 72, which is the usable battery capacity in kilowatt hours, that gives me a number of 65%. That means I would need at least 65% of the battery charged when I left the supercharger in order to make it to Duluth. That would also mean, logically, that I would arrive in Duluth with 0% battery charge. That is something I'm not gonna do. So because these days I really just prefer to arrive with at least 15% battery um, charge in case there's a detour, in case there's anything going on, um, I just want 15% extra play. So I'm gonna take that 65% charge number that I got and add 15% on top of it. And so I would want to leave the supercharger or my home charger or a free public charger, whatever uh, the source of your electrons is, I would wanna leave there with no less than an 80% charging. And the good news about the Tesla is that you can set it to like stop charging at a certain amount. Um, in my case, I'm sitting in the super, I'm sitting in the car while it's supercharging, so I just click, you know, stop manually on the dashboard when it gets there. So let's do the 15 mile average scenario now with the mathematics. At 377 watt hours per mile, you just multiply that by 118, and then that gives you, once you move the decimal for kilowatt hours, that gives you 44.5 kilowatt hours is what you would need to get to Duluth at 118 miles, which would mean I would only need a 62% charge in the battery. You add 15% on top of that, and that's 77%. And the last scenario, which is the 30 mile average, that was my best energy consumption average at 370 watt hours per mile. You multiply that by 118 miles to get to Duluth, which equals 43.7 kilowatt hours once you move the decimal. And you divide that by 72, uh, which is the kilowatt hour battery capacity that I have usable, which results in 61% of the battery should be charged before I get on the road. Again, because I want 15% play, uh, I would not want to get on the road until I had 76% charge in the battery. 
He's still bouncing up and down. So that's how it works. Uh, for anyone who has any questions, please uh, leave your question uh, in the comments below. I am not an expert at this at all, uh, but I'm learning kind of as you're all learning with me. Uh, certainly there are Tesla owners out there who are experts at all this. Let me know if you have another way that you calculate your mileage or your battery percentage or you kind of reverse engineer some of the numbers. Um, it's not that hard once you get used to it, but honestly, when I bought the car, I really had no idea about all this stuff. I didn't even know what a KW was or a, I mean, I kind of knew what a kilowatt was, but at the age, I didn't know what it was. And you know, I don't know if the average consumer's going to so easily. I think we can learn it. It's not a big deal. Um, I would say, I almost think that we shouldn't even call it kilowatt hours. We should come up with something a little easier that rolls off the tongue, like Kiwa, like kilowatt hours. You can spell it with an H, but if we're being lazy, just drop the H and be like, oh, I need a 72 Kiwa charge today, or oh, that trip burned through 50 Kiwas. That's my proposal. I like things nice and easy. And I think the less sciencey it sounds, like miles, um, even though miles is purely, I mean, just as mathematical or exact or scientific as anything else, um, just call it Kiwas, 42 Kiwas. So let me know how you calculate your numbers. Let me know what kind of efficiency you're getting. For those of you who've had your Teslas throughout the dead of winter in the upper Midwest or anywhere in the country that's gotten super cold, let us know what you're getting. Uh, and if you live somewhere super hot, uh, let us know in the comments below what you're getting during the dead of summer because these two extremes are the things that are going to get a battery. Uh, as far as I understand, if you're in like 40 degree weather up to 80 or something, that's just like battery paradise. But this country and a lot of countries in this world do not have the luxury of living in that pleasant little middle ground, certainly not during winter and certainly not during summer. So share the wealth, share the knowledge, let us know what kind of mileage you're getting or uh, kilometerage and uh, hope to hear from you soon. Hope you enjoyed the video and good luck running your own numbers.